Hi, welcome back to uh, film number seven in this series of 10 films that we've put together entitled The Master Trainer. Um, if you can think back, we talked about how the master trainer operates from a systematic process of training. Doesn't see things as an event, but sees it as a process. That, that process begins with um, identifying performance issues and then putting a solution in place for designing a solution, I guess is the right way to say it, to meet those performance issues. And we've now moved on to the third phase of the process, which is to implement what's been uh, decided upon, or in training terms, the delivery phase. We've designed something and now we're going to deliver it. Um, I was talking to uh, a friend of mine from Asia uh, a short while ago, uh, Doris D'Souza, her name is, she's a real master trainer. And I asked her a very difficult question. I asked her to give me one word, a single word, that would sum up the future of L&D from her perspective. And I was expecting her to say, um, oh, things like agility, uh, responsiveness, uh, even digital. But what she came back with was really interesting. She came back with the word people. And of course, that takes us to the crux of the matter for a a master trainer. A master trainer is always concerned with people. They want the people who they deal with to be the best they can be. And the, the phase that we're talking about today, that delivery phase, is where people, I suppose, come into the sharpest focus. Because the master trainer understands that it's the human interaction between the trainer and the learner that probably is the key to success in this phase. And the key to uh, successful human interaction, as we know, is all about communication. And for a, a master trainer, the communication skills of being able to use the appropriate question in the appropriate context, uh, the skill of listening at uh, not just the superficial level, but at the two levels beneath that, are all really important. But the master trainer also realizes that there is another aspect of communication that they need to keep their eye on. And it's that aspect that's been called a variety of things. Sometimes it's just called nonverbal communication. Sometimes the shorthand is used body language. And so really, I just want to spend a few moments uh, now looking at that aspect of it, because a lot has been written about questions. A lot has been written about um, listening. But I wanted to focus our attention on how we use nonverbal communication or body language to improve the quality of delivery. I'm going to take my friend Doris's word. Uh, if you remember, that word was people. And I want to use people as an acrostic just to put in our brain some things to help us remember the areas we need to focus on. So people, P-E-O-P-L-E. -E. The first P I want you to think of as posture and gestures. Posture and gestures. Um, I should say straight away here that there are some people who take body language and turn it into a science, and um, every stroke of the chin, every twitch of the eye, every touch of the nose means something deep that they need to reinterpret into the current situation. I'm not one of those people. I think there are things that are helpful to us, but I, I, I'm convinced that sometimes I... I touch my nose because it's itchy. I know that I stroke my chin because I'm thinking about something and, uh, you know, I've got a little bit of a, a twitch going on there as well. So I don't put course on all of these minutiae. However, there are some things that are important. And when it comes to posture and gestures, I'm talking about things about if, if somebody's sitting, are they leaning inwards? Are they leaning forwards? Or are they leaning back and, and coming out of it? If they're standing up, do they have their hands in the pocket slouching? Or are they upright with their arms straight or, or maybe they're bringing their arms into play up here when it comes to gestures are they are they pointing or poking or even just putting their hand up in a stopping gesture all of those things i think are important and it helps us to understand where our learners are coming from can i also say that as we're thinking about the, the body language i'm also asking you as a master trainer to consider your own nonverbal communication, and somehow uh, to take control of that for yourself so that you convey the right things. So for, for P, do you have the right posture? Do you use the appropriate gestures? 
that make your point, that enforce the communication? Or are you quite um, so relaxed, you're used to the material, it doesn't really give you that edge, so you, know, you, you, you don't come across with any authenticity or any sincerity when it comes to, to this material. So P is people and postures. E is eyes. I think the Chinese probably got it right when they referred to the eyes as being the windows of the soul. And uh, I don't understand it, but there is something almost subliminal that goes on in us as we look into somebody's eyes. There is something coming out of them through their eyes that, that gives us some clues as to, as to what's going on. And the same, of course, uh, from our side. Uh, our eyes betray how we're, how we're feeling. O, P-E-O, O is for orientation. And orientation is how uh, people are positioned in the training room. If they're doing an exercise, for example, or one of the learners sort of gravitating to the outside of the group, is another uh, learner pushing to try to get to the heart of the group? For you as a master trainer, how do you position yourself when you're addressing the group? Where do you always stay static at the front of the group? Or do you move? And do you move purposefully? Not just because you're fed up standing still and you want to stretch your legs. So orientation, positioning is, is important. So that's P-E-O, P. P stands for proximity, very similar to orientation. But proximity is one of those things that um, I think probably ties in to this idea of people having a personal space, an area about themselves um, that bring them uh, comfort. And I, I've put P in here, proximity, because I believe that proximity is a real tool for the master trainer. The master trainer is able to control people, control their learners, simply by the proximity they assume to them. Proximity, moving close to somebody, can stop the over-talkative one in their tracks. It can encourage the shy one to, to speak up. It can give support to the person who's trying to get a difficult point across, just by the, the master trainer moving closer to them. And of course, the reverse is true, moving further away from people and controlling the, the, um, the learners. Now, in our next film, just as a heads up, we want to spend much more time looking upon the people who inhabit our training room and how we can deal with difficult people. So, so look out for that in the next film. But for now, just that idea of proximity. So P-E-O-P-L stands for looks, appearance. Again, you know, I wouldn't die for any of this stuff, but there are real clues that we can pick up about people from their appearance. And appearance goes from the color of the clothes that they use, the style of the clothes that they use. Are they the wrong side of casual? Are they over formal? Uh, that tells us an awful lot about their attitude as they come into the training room. And the same, of course, is true for you as a master trainer. How you appear. You know, we all know that people form an opinion very, very quickly based on what they see, based on appearance. Now, if the master trainer understands that this interaction between them and the learner is vital to the success of the delivery process, then they would choose to dress appropriately that would bring that interaction off to the right start. So that's P-E-O-P-L-E. -E. The last E is to do with expression, the face. The face is probably the most um, clear clue as to what's, go what's going on inside of, of people. As we learn to understand people, I guess everybody's different. Each face is different. And the raised eyebrow of one face is different. And the reason it's raised is different from the raised eyebrow on another face. So we need to take this uh, personally and get to understand our learners. So there we have it, P-E-O-P-L-E, -E, people, the most important element of the training process. And um, people stands for posture and gestures, eyes, orientation or positioning, proximity, looks or appearance, and facial expression. So I would uh, offer that to you as something to think about, something to work on, not to overly digest and overly think, but be aware of it and use it to your advantage as you try to make this, this part of the process that is totally focused on people, totally focused on the learner. You seek to make this an incredible quality experience that will stick with the learner long after they've left you 
and long after they get back to work and try to put into practice the things that they've learned. So that brings us to the end of episode seven. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and until next time, bye-bye. Hi, thanks for watching the film. I just want to keep you for a few moments more because I've said on a number of occasions in this series that we're only um, looking at a superficial level uh, across these subjects. And what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to click on the link below and have a look at our home study certificates. You'll see there far more in-depth opportunities for you to explore these subjects. And the best thing about it is if you go now, you'll probably find it at a really good price. Thanks.